These are 10 of the top piano riffs of all time. I did not make this list. I have no idea what is on this list. This was a list that we compiled based on a bunch of other lists that we found on the internet. Is this the real life? Of course. Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide. No escape from reality. B flat. Okay, so there goes this video. This is going to be claimed. Link in the description to get 30% off on uh, the Corno Music Academy because this is what we do and everything gets claimed and that's our life. So if you want to support the channel, link in the description down below. Go learn how to play the piano and uh, get 30% off while you do. Okay, so Bohemian Rhapsody in the key of B flat. And of course, the part that everybody always plays and that everybody knows is the I would say this definitely belongs on the list even though it's really just kind of that one part right that is the most notable that people always learn how to play on the piano because then there's so many other parts to this song and it's one of the reasons why I think Bohemian Rhapsody is just such a masterpiece is because it has so much to it and if you're learning it from a piano perspective like there's so many different directions that you can go and focus on these little details here and there because there's a lot of stuff going on and there's a lot of different thematic changes and all that stuff and that's one of the things that I think makes it such a classic and why people love it so much but definitely this is easily the most recognizable in terms of piano riffs. Moving on. Ah, yes. This. Oh. Okay, so I don't think I've ever actually played this. So it's E flat um, in the first inversion. And then F minor. I think that's it. Yeah, I mean it's it's really simple, right? It's just <laughs> there's, no, there's not a dominant there. You know, and that's actually a really nice chord progression. So basically what it is, is if we're calling E flat our one chord, like our home bass, right? It just goes from there and then goes to the five chord based on the B flat, because that's the fifth degree of, of E flat. One, two, three, four, five, right? And so instead of the naturally occurring five chord, which would be dominant chord, right? So the, our fifth degree of the scale, the chord that's based on that, is usually that's our dominant chord but instead we've changed it to be a minor chord here. And so it creates this kind of dark shift. Beautiful, it's a really beautiful shift. It sounds settled, it feels like it's pretty settled in a way. Really beautiful sound, especially coming off of that that uh, contrast of the, the home base of this E flat. It feels very uh, positive, very happy, and then all of a sudden it dumps us into this. It's a really nice motion. Ah. I always thought that intro was kind of interesting. Like, we literally have D minor seven, and then if we take this and just continue to like transform it up by thirds, so like, we get these stacked thirds that ultimately leads us to this, by itself, this shape is kind of an A minor seven, right? But it's just sitting on top of this D minor. It's almost just like an extension, upper extension of that D minor. And if you just throw a little bit of a uh, of an approach note or a, an A flat passing tone in front of that, you get that. And then it's just a chromatic fall down after that. That's a good one to try that can kind of actually kind of help you understand a little bit about the finger motion for a lot of these type of what you might call more jazz licks and like little phrases and things that get used a lot. 
But I would say that probably the riff part of it that winds up being one of the most popular things on the piano has got to be this part. It's a nice little riff. It uses this kind of uh, pedal tone, right? holding that C on the bottom sort of throughout, and then we just have a little... Something like that, right? Basically, we're using the one chord, the four chord, the five chord, with this C in the bottom. It's a nice progression, it is. I get why people like it so much. I get why it gets requested so much. But if I ever get it requested again, I might punch myself directly in the face repeatedly. So I think what makes this pretty iconic, there's one sort of chromatic motion that we don't typically hear in things like this. That, that little thing right there, I think that's what makes this pretty recognizable and, and, and probably pretty iconic. These chromatic motions that we are very familiar with hearing in jazz aren't necessarily used as much in pop because pop tends to be a lot more diatonic. It tends to... That's why, you know, even Piano Man, we look at... All of that right there is just purely diatonic mo motion within this C major context. And it's not until we get this secondary dominant and but that's kind of it and and so you know and with imagine it's kind of the same thing except for that right there so again just like piano man we have one little step out and that is a, again i think a reason why this that part of the piano riff portion is so iconic and popular and everybody recognizes it instantly yes <laughs> I'm gonna make an argument for this one because I actually think there's, this is kind of, it's kind of interesting. See how many times it takes me to get it right. I think this one is actually kind of cool because you stack where these notes lay on each other. This right here, this is a really nice combination of notes. So we're getting the feeling that this is like a four to a five to a one. More specifically, we kind of hear it as like a four to a five that's maybe not defined. It might be like a suspended version. And then we hear this one, but it's over the third, right? So it's never fully like resolved. Right, that's basically what's happening here. Like, oh, okay, I'm corrected. The melody is the third. But what made me kind of think that it's just a sus chord is because is that we still have the B in there. And that's what I think makes this sound really cool. Something about that combination of notes to me, it's just really nice, you know, and we brush over it fairly quickly. But even the resolution here, that's a beautiful spread. And I always liked how the fourth comes back in before the phrase starts over again. I just always thought that was kind of nice. Oh. Yeah. Those first two chords so impactful, so good at laying out this kind of melancholy feeling. We might be expecting to hear an E major chord just with the third of that chord in the bass. Okay, but instead we hear this. That C sharp in there tells us that it's not, in fact, an E major chord, but rather 
it's a C sharp minor chord. And then that G sharp that we moved to in the bass is simply the fifth of that, right? So we have this motion chord progression has a lot of emotional changes just in and of itself amongst those four chords, right? It's like, oh yeah, oh it's sweet, it sounds nice. Oh, it's sad though. Oh, oh yeah, it's, it's, de it's definitely sad. But maybe it's not all bad. <laughs> what do we got next? What is this? Of course it is. <laughs> it's Fantastic. It's kind of a shame that it's so overplayed, right? Because it it's kind of becomes a meme, it almost becomes a joke. So I actually give this one a lot of props because it has two different halves. Check this out. So the first half. And then it goes back to, the, you almost think it's gonna do the same thing again. Because it goes, which is the same, but then. That's a really nice second half change, right? It's a subtle difference. It's not a huge difference, but like it kind of helps to wrap the whole phrase up. It gets overplayed a ton and it can it gets a lot of flack for that, but not bad. What do we got next? What is this? <laughs> oh man. Really? This is on the top 10 list? It starts with I don't know why. Oh man, I used to love this song when I was a kid. Going from a minor chord, climbing down in whole steps to the, I suppose, the flat six of that home bass, right? And the flat six chord, we talked about this in the Batman, uh, in the movie about superhero. What makes superheroes e epic? It's this, it's that. <laughs> Belongs on the list of top pianists of all time, really, does it? I don't know. Certainly recognizable. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, our boy Charlie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of respect for Charlie Booth because he is a dude that knows what he is doing. He has a really great education, he's a great piano player, and he has a really good harmonic background. And I think it's always interesting when you see people like that that like to write things that are this simple. And of course, it's it's appropriate for this sort of pop context, and, and it works really great, and that's why he is Charlie Puth. We're going from G minor to the one, then to the four, to the one. Quick touch on the five before starting it over again. Very nice usage of common tones and a sustained melody over and over again while changing the harmony below it. All right, we're gonna hit one more on this list. Let's see what we got here. What is this link? Yes! <laughs> Are these riffs or are they intros? I don't really know. This is the funny part about my musical history, right? Because I come from basically farm country. I grew up on a farm. I don't know if you guys know that. The whole country music from the 90s, 2000s, like, like I grew up on a lot of that stuff. Do I take time out of my day to listen to it now? No. I don't hate it as much as probably a lot of people do. Uh, just because, I don't know, I guess there's a nostalgia factor for me. It's not exactly the pinnacle of harmonic uh, interest, but it is a nice intro. Simple chords, 
simple harmony, but it sounds really nice. How is this for a top 10 list? I feel like you guys would probably put in the comments a ton of stuff that's missing, and I'm sure there are probably many things that should be on this list. These are great places to learn little bits and pieces about like how to piece together some cool phrases and some nice harmony that works and is simple and easy to play. And if you need any additional things on how to actually get around, then definitely check out the Cornell Music Academy. Check out our intro to piano course. You can get it for 30% off with code MUSICTHEORY30 right now. There's a link in the description description below and it is the best way you can start figuring out this instrument getting getting a hold of some of these things like how to use your fingers which sounds like an obvious thing but it's actually not as obvious as you might think but it's not hard right so a lot of these things we explain super in detail there's tons of, of really really super clear graphic animations for you it's gonna help you work towards having the freedom and understanding of this instrument and a little bit of music as well in general to help you play anything you want to play so if you want to support the channel that's the best way you can do that because Holy Lord, this video has been claimed probably a bazillion times. It helps out the channel a ton and I really appreciate it. It ensures that we can continue doing what we love to do, which is provide great content for you. And uh, thank you so much for doing that. And thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.